Hey folks, in my last video I showed you how to create complex layouts in WordPress using the block editor. Now one of the most common pieces of feedback I receive about using the block editor for layouts is while everything looks great on desktop browser, making it look good on mobile can be a real challenge. And yes, there are definitely some issues when trying to get complex desktop designs to work well on mobile. So in this video, I want to tackle how we can fix those issues using only the block editor and a little bit of the browser. We won't be editing core theme files to create custom style sheets or breakpoints. Instead, I'll show you how to make these adjustments using the block editor interface. And while we will be writing some CSS, it will be done through the browser inspector and the style editor, and then pasted directly into the block editor, keeping everything simple and manageable without modifying any theme files. And before we dive into any fixes, first let's understand what happens when a block theme is loaded and rendered in the browser. Now with every block theme comes a theme.json file, and I've created a playlist on this channel that dives deep into the theme.json file settings and styles. And you can check that out via the link on the top right of this video. So initially, when the theme is loaded, the theme.json file is applied and it contains a core set of settings and styles. If some settings aren't explicitly defined in your theme.json file, WordPress merges the default core values into your file. Now, as a user, you have two main ways to customize all of these settings and styles. One, via global styles, and these allow you to make changes across your entire site. And when you save them, they're stored in the database and override whatever is loaded from the theme.json file. Two, block level settings. These are the styles that you adjust directly in the editor on the right-hand side when creating content. These changes get saved as part of the page content itself. And for the most part are applied as inline styles. And it's important to note that inline styles have the highest precedence as they are applied directly to the HTML elements. So to recap, here's the order of priority. The theme.json file is loaded first. Any missing defaults are merged from the core theme.json file. Global styles that have saved to the database override any existing styles. And finally, block level settings are applied directly to the editor and take precedence over everything else. So now that we understand the order of priority, we can effectively address the mobile layout issues. Let's dive into how to do that next. So how do we address the mobile issue? The first thing we probably want to do is to go to the view menu and switch to the mobile view. This allows us to scroll down and get a quick look at how the site appears on smaller screens. Now, as a side note, this isn't my design. So there are some contrast issues we need to fix, but we'll get to that later. The first thing you'll notice is that there's a gap down the left and right hand side of the screen. And you might not see it clearly here, but I'll show you in a moment when we switch to the browser view, when we inspect the site directly in the browser. But here we'll notice that there's a small space between elements, spacing that you might see in the block editor, but not necessarily on the front end. Now this happens because the block editor includes extra space to display the inserter, which is a necessary part of the user interface for editing purposes. So just be aware that this is why the block editor's mobile view shouldn't be relied on for a fully accurate representation. It's meant to give you a general indication rather than the exact preview of how your site will look on the front end on smaller devices. The best way to accurately check how your site looks on mobile is to view it directly in the browser and using the inspector to emulate the mobile view, like so. This method ensures you're seeing how your site will actually appear on mobile devices, allowing you to make necessary adjustments with confidence. That said, this method isn't entirely accurate either. The best way to get a true representation is to physically test on an actual mobile device. So as I mentioned, we immediately can see that there's an issue with the spacing on the left and right hand side along with the horizontal block spacing. So I'm going to switch back to the block editor and the first thing I want to do is adjust the spacing on the left and right side. Now by default, a group block has padding applied. If it's not set in your theme's theme.json file, it will come from the core theme.json file. This default setting ensures that the content looks relatively okay on mobile, even if you haven't defined padding yourself in the theme.json file. But in this case, I want the content to go all the way to the edge of the device. So I know that this second group here is the content I want to adjust. If I go into the settings and check the padding, as I mouse over, you'll notice a blue highlight indicating where the padding is applied. Even though it might appear as zero, it's actually being set from the core theme.json file. So if you zero that out, it resets the padding, and that's the first adjustment we need to make. Once we save that change, we can move forward. Now I'm going to address all of these issues directly in the front end. So if we refresh the front end, you'll see that the gap on the left and right hand side is gone, which is exactly what we want. The next issue we want to address is the horizontal white space. Now this is happening because a margin has been set. If we look at the desktop version, we can see a nice margin or piping around all the elements. 
So as we reduce the screen size down to mobile or a smaller screen size, this margin is probably being reduced with some CSS function, but it's not being reduced to zero and I want it to be zero. So the first thing I'll do is inspect the element to identify where that space is coming from. So when you're inspecting an element, make sure the rules panel is visible. It's typically on the right hand side and Firefox provides a handy highlighting feature that shows you which styles are being applied to which element as you hover over them. And using the arrows on my keyboard, I'll go up the DOM tree while watching the rules. And what I'm looking for is a spacing value. And there's an element here that has a top margin applied and it's set to the WP preset spacing value of 20. It uses a CSS min function, which is why it shrinks and expands as the browser width is changed. Now to address this, I need to find a class I can specifically target. Now in the element, I can see there are several classes applied to this element. The first one is WP block columns, which is a generic class applied to all columns. So that's not the one I want to target. I need something more specific. So next I can see a class called is layout flex and then WP container core columns is layout. This is the class I'm going to target because it has a number appended to it, making it unique throughout the page. For example, if we have WP container core columns is layout four, that's the class I'll focus on because the margin is being applied here. Now you might notice similar other classes with different numbers appended. And that's how WordPress creates uniqueness for these elements. So I'll target the specific class WP container core columns is layout four to remove or adjust that margin. So how do we fix this? So the first step is to select the element where we want to apply the new class rule. I'll add a new class by clicking the plus icon in the rules panel, which will pick up all the existing classes and allow us to apply new styles in line. Now by clicking the inline link here in the rules panel, it will take us directly to the style editor where the classes are set and we can start to edit them live in the browser window. Now we need to isolate the class we want to target. It's somewhat buried amongst all of the other classes that have been generated. So we're looking for the WP container core columns is layout for class as this is the only class I want to target. Now the next step is to add a media query. This allows us to set specific styles for certain screen widths. Now since our current screen width is set to 375 pixels, we'll set a media query with the max width of 480 pixels. To do that, we append the at symbol to the keyword media, followed by what we want to set in brackets, and then encompass the rule in curly brackets. This means that when this condition is met, any screen size up to 480 pixels will be targeted. Since 375 is within this range, this class will be applied specifically to this device width. I'll cut the class and paste it within the media query curly brackets. Now I'm going to add the rule, which is margin top zero pixels. Now at first you might notice that it doesn't affect anything. And this is because the original style is set in line, which takes priority over everything else. And the only way to override this is to add the important rule. And by doing so, we can successfully remove that gap. So that's now fixed. And if we scroll down further, we'll notice another horizontal white space. So again, I'll inspect the element. And as we move up the DOM while watching the rules, we can find where it's being targeted. Now this is an interesting one because it's using some clever CSS. What it's doing is it's targeting an element, WP container core columns is layout three. Then it's selecting the next child element, then using the universal selector represented with an asterisk combined with the adjacent sibling selector, the plus symbol. So essentially it's saying select the next element and then the one after that. So to explain this visually, it's targeting this class WP container core columns is layout three, and then it's getting the next element plus the one after that. And this is the element it's styling, but it's applying the rule only on that particular class. So all I need to do is to copy that class, go back to the style editor and add it to our custom CSS within the media query. Now let me just check the property. Ah, it's not margin this time, it's margin block start, which deals with the block gap spacing. So I'll add that parameter to my custom CSS, set it to zero, and we'll see that it removes the spacing from between the elements. Again, I'll add the important rule to make sure my custom CSS overrides the default settings. So as we continue to scroll down the page, the next element we encounter with an issue is the negative margin. Now this issue is where two columns meet. Since we're using columns that stack on mobile, this represents the end of the first column while the start of the second column has a margin of minus 100 pixels applied. So if we switch back to the desktop version, we can see the second column is overlapping 
the end of the first column due to this negative margin. So let's inspect the element to identify the specific block we need to target. So as I move up the DOM, I can observe the rules panel and quickly pinpoint where the negative margin is originating. And looking at the attributes and classes, I can see that I don't want to target this generic WP block cover or the other generic classes like has custom content or position bottom center. And what's relevant here is the class has negative margin, which indicates that the negative margin has been applied. Now, since this is for mobile or smaller devices, I generally prefer to avoid any negative margins. So I'm going to focus on targeting the has negative margin class. And from my experience, using negative margins on desktop usually doesn't translate well to mobile. Therefore, I'm comfortable targeting this class specifically globally. But obviously, those decisions are particular to each use case. So let's go to the style editor and simply add this class in here, ensuring to prepend it with a full stop to indicate it's a class. Now I'll set the margin top to zero. And again, since this is in line, I'll apply the important rule to make sure we override existing styles. Now that issue is fixed. So moving further down, we encounter another gap likely applied to another sequentially numbered container block. Now if we observe the rules panel, navigate through the DOM again, we can quickly identify the source of this spacing which is again attributed to the margin block start. And this margin is targeting a specific class and uses the universal selector to access the next element within the parent element. And to verify that, we can check the class hierarchy above where we find WP container core column is layout eight, and then it's targeting the second element child of that parent. So we want to remove that white space. And to do this, we can simply copy that class, paste it into our style editor, and since we're applying the same changes, we can append this class to the existing class simply by adding a comma. And this tells the style sheet to apply the rule to both classes. You can technically chain as many classes as you need in the same declaration, but only if the rule is consistently similar. Now, as you can see, the extra white space has been removed. But as we scroll down the page, everything appears fine until we reach this particular cover block. And let's first examine what's happening on the desktop version. Now here we're utilizing a cover block and the background of this cover is responsible for creating this stripe effect, allowing the image to break out. And that's created with gradients. Now this particular technique creates the illusion of excessive space or padding above and below the cover, which is not ideal. And by inspecting the element, we can confirm that this issue lies with the background gradient applied to the entire cover block. And unfortunately, this particular design technique doesn't translate well on mobile. So to fix this, I would suggest changing the background from a gradient to a solid color, in this case, black, which should resolve the issue. Now, the question is, how do we target this specific element? And we want to avoid applying changes to all cover blocks, as this would affect the entire site. Instead, since we're using the background gradient, we can target specific classes associated with this block. Now we could focus on the WP block cover background or has background gradient, but I want to create a new class here. And to do that, we need to isolate this element within the block editor. So let's go back there and do just that. Now the next step is going to mean that we're going to have to refresh the browser. Now before we refresh the page, I want to show you a technique to ensure that we don't lose the custom styles that we've already set. So in the block editor, I'm going to isolate the block cover, navigate to the settings, specifically the advanced tab and here I'll add a new additional class for this block. I'll name it cover block grad mobile to indicate that it's tailored for the mobile version. And once I've set that, I can return to the front end to verify the changes. However, if I refresh the page to inspect this element to see if the class has been applied, I risk losing all of the custom CSS that I've just written. And it's crucial to keep a copy of this in memory. And this is one of the reasons why I prefer to work in the browser as it provides a clearer view of the syntax for reasons that will become clear soon. So as I mentioned, refreshing this will erase all of the custom CSS. So I'll select all of it, copy or cut it to ensure that it's stored in my computer's memory. Now I can safely refresh the page so after inspecting the element, I can see that we have the cover block with our new class, cover block grad mobile. And this allows us to specifically target this element. So next to restore all of the previous styles and resolve the remaining issues, I'll create a new class by going to the rules panel, click the plus icon to add a new rule, then navigate to the inline style where the new custom CSS is set. I'll select all of that and paste it all back in bringing all of the custom styles that we just wrote. So next I need to target the new class we added to the cover block. I'll start by copying the new class name from here, then head over to the style editor to insert the new class. 
So once I add it here, I'll target the child class has background gradient. I'll put a space in after that for a tidier look as it helps with my OCD. Now all we need to do is to set the background to solid black. And since this is an inline style applied to the span element, we need to include the important rule to ensure that it overrides any existing styles. And just like that, the block now looks more integrated within the layout. Now there are other ways to fix this, like adjusting the block's gradient or height, but hopefully you get the idea. So this is my method for addressing mobile issues in the block editor without delving into code or theme files. So how do we save these changes to our database or theme? Well, it's simple. First, I'll select all of the custom CSS, copy it. Next, I'll head back to the block editor and navigate to global styles. And in here, we'll find the additional CSS section. Now you'll notice there's no syntax highlighting in this area. And this is the reason why I like to do things in the browser. Now this is a known issue and there is a related GitHub issue for it. I believe the challenge lies in creating an accessible way to implement syntax highlighting. For now, we're stuck with a basic text box, but it gets the job done. So I'll paste my custom CSS into this box and hit save. And this action saves the custom styles directly to my database, overriding my theme.json file, any core theme.json files that are merged into that file, and any global settings or block level style settings. So we can refresh the page. I'm now viewing the mobile version of the site in the block editor. As I mentioned earlier, there is a bit of space here and this is necessary to display the inserter. And there's an empty block here creating the staggered layout effect. It's essentially an empty column. And since we're using the stacked layout for mobile, this won't actually show up on the front end. The blocks will just fit together seamlessly and the space is just the placeholder in the editor. You'll notice that the negative margin issue is now fixed in the mobile view. And again, that's an empty column block. And as for our cover block with the gradient, there are still a few minor issues that we could address further. Seems to look different in the block editor than it does in the browser. So again, as I said earlier, the true acid test is to view all of your hard work on a physical device as the block editor and the browser emulators are not fully accurate. But this is my technique for fixing mobile issues in the WordPress block editor, all done right within the editor itself. No need for coding any theme files, just straightforward CSS modifications in the browser. So you could spend a lot more time on refining all of these issues. For example, the cover block, there are some contrast issues, but like I said, I didn't design this but they're easy enough to adjust. Simply go to the block settings, find the overlay option, adjust the overlay to say 50%. Once you save that, that resolves the contrast issues for your images and text overlay. But again, that's not the focus of this video. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you found this useful, do consider giving it a thumbs up or share it amongst your other WordPress peers who might find these techniques useful. And if you haven't already, why not consider subscribing? For now, until next time, Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.